Hello guys, how are you today? I hope everyone is doing great. It's one more day, one more lesson at Theta College Online. I'm really glad to see you coming back and I see many new faces uh, every time uh, when we're talking in the chat, but I also see some people who are always there, so I'm really glad that you're enjoying it. And uh, I really appreciate it when you uh, tell me what you like, what you we could do better. So keep doing that. I really like it. Um, today I will start uh, with a variation of my usual question. I will not ask you how you feel today, but I will ask you how were you feeling yesterday evening? Try to remember, what were you doing yesterday evening? Were you relaxed, maybe? Were you watching a film? Um, were you happy? Maybe you were in the middle of eating something delicious? So try to think about it and write down your answers. And from my question, you may probably take a brief idea of what we're going to talk about today. If not, I will go on to tell you. So, first, I will tell you how I was feeling yesterday evening. Yesterday evening, I was feeling a bit tired because I had been working all day and I started feeling a bit better after I had rested for a couple of hours. So this is my answer. And of course, uh, your emojis are very, very welcome. But if you want to write a fuller answer like mine, you can also type it in the comment section and in the live chat. Now, did you get a hint of uh, on what we are going to talk about? If not, I will help you even more. Now, does this remind you of something? So, I'm sure now it's a bit easier. Today we are talking about narrative tenses. Of course, you all know the narrative tenses. You can see my examples of the tenses here was feeling, had been working, started, had rested. Just in case you don't remember them very well, I will do a very, very quick review and then we'll practice on that. So, which are the narrative tenses? Of course, the past continues. Sorry, let's start with the symbols. The past simple the past continues, the past perfect simple, and last but not least, the past perfect continues. And you can take a look at my example. I have um, actually written it again for you here. And I want you to take a look. Which of the tenses is the past simple? Which of the tenses is the past continuous? You can write it. Uh, in the comment section, was feeling PS, PC, PPS, PPC. You can use the abbreviation to do that. You don't have to write the whole uh, sentence. So we have past continuous, I was feeling. Um, past perfect continuous, I had been working. Past simple, started and past perfect simple had started. So I will just go through very quickly of the use and the form of each of the tenses. You all remember that the past simple talks about a short action, something that happens fast, something that happens suddenly. Many people when I ask them here uh, in the discussion about narrative tenses, they also tell me that it's a finished action. But don't forget, in narrative tenses, all the actions are finished. So it's not a main characteristic to mention here. Uh, 
then of course the form ed for the regular verbs and you need to remember the irregular form if you have an irregular verb if you don't remember them go back and start revising a bit it's a good idea you can see the timeline as well okay we did an action in the past generally like i started feeling better from the example i gave you earlier past continues past continues of course you can understand from the name that we have progress but it is not just an action with duration it's an action in progress um for example she was uh, hiking when i saw her i saw her in the middle of the action so you can keep that in mind it's a specific moment i don't know when the action started i don't know when the action finished i only know that in the middle of the action i had the information of some progress happening and you can see it in the timeline you see my x is in the middle i don't know anything about the past i don't know anything about uh the finishing point like i was feeling a bit tired yesterday evening okay and uh, uh past perfect simple is our next one the past perfect simple sometimes is a little bit difficult to grasp but the use is pretty uh, simple if you think that we only use it in this one case to talk about an earlier action, the first action that happened in a sequence of actions. You all know the form had, past, past participle, and you can see my example as well from uh, the one I mentioned before. After I had rested for a couple of hours, I felt better. So you can see I have two actions, had rested and felt. What happened first? Did I rest first or did I feel better first? So of course my first action, as we said, is the past perfect. And you can see it in the timeline, okay? It's the action that happens first that's marked in pink. I had rested and then I felt better. So you can use it to give emphasis uh, to what happened first. And our last tense, past perfect continuous. We have a long action, full duration. Um, had been plus ing. The usual question here is what's the difference between past continuous and past perfect continuous? As I told you before, in past continuous, you don't have any information about when the action started, when the action finished, if it finished. Okay. But here, you know when it started, you know when it finished, you have information about the full progress. So, if I say I had been working all day, this means that my action started in the beginning of the day and finished at the end of the day and that's it okay so um, something else that you need to keep in mind and that actually many students ask me about is how do we use all these sentences together in one short paragraph most people tell me I'm fine um, using one tense per sentence filling the gaps with the correct sentence. But how can I use it to write something? And how can I include all four tenses in one sentence? And that's what we're going to see here, how to connect them. I have my four sentences from the example I gave you. I had been working all day. I was feeling a bit tired. I started feeling better. I had rested. And you can see my example of uh, actually uh, using all these sentences and using linking words as well to give more meaning. 
and to make the connection smoother. For example, I had been working all day, so I was feeling a bit tired. Okay, so, so you show the result and then contrast, but after I had rested for a couple of hours, I started feeling better. So you can see how important linking words are and how much they can help you to put everything together. And this is just one example of linking the specific sentences. You can use uh, different uh, linking words if you want, it's up to you. Another example for the same sentence would be this. I was feeling tired because I had been working all day. So we reverse. We start with the result and then we go on to say why. We use because to do that. And of course, instead of but, you can use other uh, words to express contrast like however. However, I started feeling better after I had rested for a couple of hours. So it's up to you what goes first, what goes second in a sentence, uh, as long as you know what you're going to talk about, what you want to talk about. And do you see that all my examples so far are kind of personal narratives? How was my day yesterday? What happened to me one day? But this is not the only case where we can use narrative tenses. Of course, we can use them for stories. Like if you read books, novels, they're full of narrative stories. But another very common use is for reports on the news. And... And this is, this is one example that I want you to take a look at and then I will have you practice on your own. So imagine that you see the reporter on the news okay, with the camera and the microphone ready to go and she talks to you about the event. Two young men had been partying with their friends but their night took a turn to the worse when they were mugged early in the morning as they were walking home. The two men were shocked and said that this had never happened to them before. So this is a very, very usual context. And again, you can see how many uh, narrative tenses we use. We use all of them, really. So if you start becoming more aware of how the language is used, it will be easier for you to use them on your own. And that's what we're going to do today. Okay. Um, I have here four different sentences than before that make up a story. And I want you to make a really, really short connection. Just use a few connecting words. You can um, meddle around with the sentences. You don't have to use them in this order. It's up to you, as long as it makes sense what you're writing, okay? So you have, I had been cooking all day. I had prepared everything. I was cleaning the kitchen. I realized there were no drinks. So I will give you a minute. Think about how you can connect the sentences, try to use linking words, and I'm waiting to see your answers in the comments and the live chat. Take a look. And 
remember all the different linking words that you can use, like so, because, uh, because of, maybe, uh, but, however, there are so many linking words that you can use. Try to take advantage of them, because they are a very, very important part of the language. And sometimes we don't use them so much. So, in case, just in case you have uh, trouble uh, imagining the story, imagine that you have dinner, okay, you have invited friends at home, so you have your checklist, okay, I need to cook, I need to prepare everything, I need to lay the table, I need to clean the kitchen, and I need drinks. So you do everything and then in the end, just before your friends come to visit you, you realize, oh my god, there are no drinks, what am I going to do now? So this is the story that you could have in mind. Of course, if you imagined of a different story and what you wrote makes sense as well, there is no problem at all. And I'm waiting for all of you to write because I always see that there are um, specific people, specific names that I always communicate with and interact in the comments. But I want to see more of you writing your answers. Uh, don't hesitate. It doesn't matter if not everything is correct. This is a way to practice, so try to write them and try to practice as much as you can. So, I will give you a few examples of uh, how I would connect the sentences. Maybe I would say something like, I had been cooking all day. And after I had prepared everything, I was cleaning the kitchen when I realized there were no drinks. So you see my linking here is a coma. I had been cooking all day, coma, and I had prepared everything. And of course, you can use while or when. While or when are really, really common words here. While I was cleaning the kitchen, I realized there were no drinks. Or I was cleaning the kitchen when I realized there were no drinks. So it's really up to you. okay? And I will check all your answers in the comment section, so don't worry if you're not sure about something. Now, before we continue, it's a chance for you to ask me questions. If you haven't understood something about the narrative tenses, ask me now, all right? Because in the next part, we are going to practice, well, you are going to practice on your own. Here is the text. Remember the four narrative tenses? And remember my tip that I usually give you in these types of exercises? Read the text really, really quickly first to get the main idea. What is it talking about? And then focus on the structure Try to think of which tense we need for the seven gaps. Past simple, past continuous, past perfect simple, or past perfect continuous. 
So you can take a minute to think about it and always keep in mind, is it a short action? Do we have duration? Um, do we have an action in progress? that we don't know when it started and when it finished. We just know it's happening at a specific time. Or maybe we have an action that has finished and we know it's full duration. We know that something happening for a long time. Think about it for a minute. Sometimes there might be key words in your text, but there might not be as well. So, of course, if you find key words, yes, underline them, keep them in mind, try to think which tense they usually link to. But remember, the linking word is not the 100% clue that will give you the answer. You must pay attention to the meaning as well. And I'm waiting to see you write in your answers. If you find number one, you can write number one. You don't have to do all seven and then type them. You can type them one by one if you want and just send me separate comments. Number one, number two, number three. Um, I will also read the text once first because I want to give you some more time to think about it second because you can also listen to my pronunciation or do some listening practice if you finished okay we just spent five incredible days in London and that was our last night we had put on our best outfits and go out for last drink it was great. We danced all night and didn't realize how fast time went by. As we walked back to our hotel, suddenly someone ran past me and tried to grab my purse. What he didn't know was that I practiced martial arts since I was a child. He begged me to let him go when the police finally arrived. It was an interesting last night in London. So it was sure a very interesting event, although it's not really nice to get mugged. So let's take a look at your answers together, okay? In number one, the answer is had spent. You also have just that helps you, okay? Something that happened just before. Number two is past simple. We had to put on our best outfits and second action went out for a last drink. Number three is had been dancing. You have the keyword here all night. We had been dancing all night. Number four we're walking as we were walking back to our hotel and your key word here is actually as uh, which is a synonym of the word while you could say while we were walking number five is run a very very fast and short action number six had been practicing, so he didn't know. What he didn't know was that I had been practicing 
martial arts since I was a child. So you see that you have a starting point, you know when it started and it actually keep, kept happening at that point. And the last one, number seven, was begging. We are talking about an action in progress at a specific moment here. The moment that the police arrived, he was in the middle of begging me to let him go. So, if you are not sure about some of the answers and uh, you cannot explain or you cannot get why this is the correct answer, write your comments down, guys, and I will answer everything. And just a little bit of pronunciation, which will also test your skills in irregular verbs. So, what I want you to do, your first task is look at the verbs and change them into past simple. So don't worry about pronunciation yet. Just change the verbs into past simple. What's the past simple of catch? What's the past simple of sleep? What's the past simple of draw? And so on. Write the past simples very, very quickly. I think you should know them. I'm not sure if you are aware of the verb sweep, the last one. Sweep, we use it when we clean the house, we sweep the house. But we use it as well uh, for a smooth movement that takes things away, like the water swept the leaves, the water took away the leaves. Oops, I just gave you the past simple, but it's okay, it's a gift from me. And you can write the past simples very, very fast in the live chat. I want to see everyone participating, okay? So, let's take a look. Here are your past simples. I will pronounce them once for you, but I will pronounce them very quickly. If you get the sound, you got it. If you didn't get it, you'll have to try and categorize them on your own. So, we have caught, slept, fought, drew, flew. Kept, thought, blue, brought, swept. Now, just give you a minute to think uh, in which of the three categories will you place each past simple? You have U, E, and O. Okay, so the first one is U like boot, E like egg, O. Okay, like horse. So take a minute to think about it and we will categorize them together. It's not very difficult and you see that actually in order to challenge you a little bit I haven't underlined a specific sound, but um, actually these words do not have similar sounds. So I don't think there is any way that you will get confused in between categories. Really, there are no similar sounds here. So... You can keep writing your answers if you haven't finished yet. And I will give you um, the answers for the first category. We have drew, flew, 
blue. And pay attention, the word blue has exactly the same pronunciation as the flu, the illness. Okay, I've got the flu, flu. It's exactly the same thing. Drew, flu, blue. So keep that in mind. And then for A, we have slept, kept, swept. Very simple, uh, no um, letters that are silent, no letters that are pronounced differently. And for our last category, this one is tricky many times. We have caught, fought, brought. And in this case, in uh, caught, for example, the GH is silent. You don't pronounce the GH in any of these words. And you actually have three sounds in caught. You have the sound k, the sound o, the long o, and the sound two. So caught, fought, brought. That's it. Now this is also something that can help you categorize um, and store irregular verbs in your memory. If you find irregular verbs difficult pronunciation is something that can help you. So you can get um, verbs with similar suffixes and categorize them together. Or, uh, for example, like the verb broken, you can, take, can categorize it with other verbs like spoken, broken, spoken. Okay, And this can help you remember them more easily if you have problems with that. And uh, last, I want to give you a few tips on how to use our narrative tenses in order to write a story. Tip 1. Start your story by describing the background. You need to give information about the background in order to attract the reader's attention. And for this function, we use past continuous. For example, the sun was shining, the children were playing in the garden, and I was enjoying my tea. So you see, this is the background, you're setting the scene. What is happening in this story before we actually go on to the main event? Tip 2. Use past perfect continues to describe a long action in a specific time frame. For example, we are still in the same story, right? Uh, the sun was shining, the children were playing, and I was enjoying my tea. I had been reading my book for almost an hour. So you see that I have the expression for almost an hour here. I make it very, very specific. I had been reading my book since that morning. And then, usually in stories, there is one action happening that um, uh, changes everything. Is the action that starts bringing some suspense in the story. So for that, you are going to use past simple. I had been reading my book when suddenly I heard a noise. So you have short action, sudden action. My last tip. Use Past perfect simple to describe an earlier action. Remember that in stories, or if you watch a film, think about it like that. You don't always know what has happened before. And many times the actions are not in order. You may start watching a film and you are presented with the ending first. Or it's in the middle 
of the of the store in media threads. So what you need to do to give to the, the reader or the viewer more information is use some um, past perfect to give us more uh, extra. So I suddenly heard a noise and just then I remembered that earlier I had left the window open. So these are a few tips. Okay, I will just read the story to you once all together. The sun was shining, the children were playing in the garden and I was enjoying my tea. I had been reading my book for almost an hour when suddenly I heard a noise. Just then I remembered that I had left the window open. So you see it's very very simple and what I want you to do is try to write your own story. Whenever you have time it's a very good idea not to write a book or 10 pages but you can write five lines and you can even write something that happened to you yesterday like kind of a diary. If you do it every day it will really help you both in sense of using the narrative tenses but will, will be a great practice in terms of vocabulary and generally becoming more fluent to the language. Okay guys, so what did we see today? Let's do a recap. We talked a lot about narrative tenses, the past simple, past continuous, past perfect simple and past perfect continuous. We focused on pronunciation, the past forms of irregular verbs, and now you know tips about writing a short story using the narrative tenses. So, I hope you really enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful because I get a lot of questions about narrative tenses. And just before we finish, tell me, what did you learn today? Type your answer in the comment section. Type the first thing that comes to your mind. Okay? And for one more day, I was really, really glad to be with you. Uh, I will be with you again for our next class and I hope you are all here as well to keep me company and learn with me. So see you next time guys. Bye. Have a great rest of the day. See you.